Oh, okay. So we need to do some signals, right? <laughs> because of the satellite. But we are now, you know, angels are our satellite, okay? Watching over us, all right? As we gather together to praise Jesus, all right? Before we uh, start sharing the word that God has for every one of you this morning, yeah, I don't, may not know all of you and your names, but definitely Jesus does. He knows every one of you by name. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your love this morning for every one of us here. If we are not here by accident, but Lord, by your divine appointment, Lord, that you have called us to come in and enjoy and experience the wonderful love of Jesus Christ. Lord, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth. Let your words go forth and not return to you void, but accomplish what you purpose in the lives of your children here. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> God sent his son. Isn't that wonderful? God sent his son. Today as we celebrate Christmas, it's about our, a God, a God who created you, a God who created this universe. The reason you were born into this world and today can experience the new life that our uh, beautiful uh, sisters went through the waters of baptism that you saw in the clip, video clip from some over here in Malaysia and some in uh, Singapore. We are not separated by time or distance all because what happened today, 2000 years ago, that God sent his son Jesus Christ into this world for each and every one of us. Let's look into the Bible in uh, Matthew chapter one. Okay, a little account of what happened on Christmas day or the day that our savior was born. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. So this is what happened. A couple who were engaged, but not together, right, as in uh, intercourse, they found that Mary was with child, okay, but it was not Joseph's child, all right, and in the natural Joseph, the natural father of Jesus, but not from him, was, oh no, my, uh, fiance <laughs> okay is pregnant okay and wanted to put her away secretly so what happened while he thought about these things behold an angel of the lord appeared hallelujah today there are angels all over the world all over where you are seated in your home in your room and all shouting glory Okay, what did this angel of God say to him in a dream? Saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Oh, how wonderful. And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name. Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Oh, what a wonderful way 
that Jesus, of Jesus coming into this world to save us through a virgin. So Jesus was conceived of God, of the Holy Spirit, not from the seed of man. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation, savior. The son of God, the savior of mankind, God incarnate. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, before Jesus came, even came, earlier than that, the prophets already prophesied, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. Everything that happens from day one, the creation of this world, Adam and Eve, until the end of this world has all been prophesied. We don't need to go see fortune teller. The whole Bible is God's word, God's heart to tell us of what is happening in this world. If you are today not sure, praise the Lord. You are at the right place listening to how God started it all and how everything will end wonderful in the purpose, the wonderful, perfect purpose and plan of God. God no, makes no mistake that virgin will bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. No more will you ever be alone in this world because Jesus came, God sent him, his son to be with us. And from through his death, through his birth, death and resurrection, it is now possible for your father, who is the God of this whole universe, to be Emmanuel, to be with you forever and ever and ever, and never leave you. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. The most beautiful name in our lips, Jesus. In 1 John 4, 9, one of his disciples, Jesus' disciples, when he was on earth, shared about this love of God. In this, the love of God was manifested in Jesus coming into this world. God's love, you know, manifested was shown towards who? Towards us, towards you, towards me, towards every human being that was ever born on this earth, God's love was shown that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. If life has been difficult, meaningless, or pointless to you, this verse what happened at Calvary tells us the wonderful good news that we can, because of God sending Jesus, we today don't need to die in despair. We don't need to take our lives. We don't need to be depressed because of our lives being sinful. But we can now live have a new life that those of you, Lillian, Adeline, Evelyn, Kate, beautiful daughter, 10 year old of a, uh, of, of, of uh, Evelyn and, S and Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. They experienced this new life 
through receiving Jesus into their hearts. And they experience and identify with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection when Jesus rose from the dead. All of them rose in their spirit from the deadness of this life of sin into the newness of a resurrection life with Jesus Christ. And from that day onwards, to live, live this word life. So we, <laughs> we had so here, all right? It, it, is, it was the name of Eve in the garden. It means life, God's life, a precious life to God. God created you. He made no mistake because you were always precious to him. And that's why God sent Jesus. This is love. If you ever think, what on earth is love? The love of this world is so fragile. It's so, you know, one day someone tells you, I love you. And the next day he says, sorry, no more love. <laughs> you know? But God's love is not like that. It is forever, for eternity. And this is the love that was demonstrated. 2,000 years ago, this morning, Christmas Day, it's about Christ. He loved us long, long, long before we ever loved him. Wow. Can anyone on this earth love us like that? Not very possible. It was his love, not ours. Lillian, it was his love, God's love. Ime, you're still there? Yes, it's God's love. He loved you long, long before you even knew that he is God, that there is a person called Jesus Christ, that this is his love, God's love, not ours. He proved it. Have you asked someone to, have you ever said to someone, you say you love me, you love me, prove it lah. Give me your bank account. <laughs> okay, if you can part with your bank account, that means you do love me. God parted not only his bank account in heaven, he gave his only son. He proved it. He proved it. God proved it. By sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. We were all born sinners. It's not a big sin or small sin. Because sin means we miss the mark. And we, we lost everything. That wonderful fellowship that Adam and Eve had with God in the garden before he sinned. But today, the beautiful redemption is like Jesus go into the pawn shop where we were all waiting to be, you know, slaughtered for our own sin. And he paid the price and bought all of us back, everyone. And the price to pay was his very own blood because that was the only price that is accepted because his blood was totally stainless, was not tainted with sin because he was not born from Adam, but he was birthed by the Holy Spirit. For when the time was right, the anointed one, came. Christ means the anointed one and died a death to give us life, to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. God knew the situation of man. 
we were dying. We were in darkness and yet not knowing it. We were helpless, yet not realizing how helpless we were. We were weak, just bullied by the devil and powerless to save ourselves. It's just like the floods, the floods. When the flood came for, for, for the Malaysians, we just experienced in a certain district here in Klang, the floods. No one could control it. And it is not God who sent the floods. It was a result of sin. While you were, we were powerless and helpless to save us, ourselves, Jesus came. God sent his son. Now, who of us would dare to die for the sake of of wicked person. The Bible says that there's none righteous. All have sinned. All who were born of Adam okay. have okay. sinned. The only one who Please. did not sin and has no sin is God's son, Jesus Christ. We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a noble person, but Christ Prove God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. God did not require anyone of humanity, of mankind, to become good before he saved us. No. He saved us while we were lost. He died for us in that place that you saw just now in the worship, in that video. It was not meant for Jesus Christ to bear that cross and to be crucified because he did not sin. He was not deserving of that. It was my sin and your sin. We were deserving to be crucified. We were deserving of death, but this is his love. He took our place. He took your place. He took my place. In the natural of someone took your place that you deserve to die. How would you feel? But this is much more. That's why the Bible says, yes, there may be someone who's willing to die for a noble person, but to die for a sinner, a criminal like us, only Christ, only God will do it. While we were lost, sometimes we were even cursing him. We were even, we grew up and said, God, are you there? Don't you care? We cursed him. And yet, and that's what happened to Jesus, right? They were cursing him while he, was went, while he went to the cross to die for them. That's why on the cross he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Such is the love of Jesus for every one of us. While we were lost and ungodly. And there is still so much more to say of his unfailing love for us. Man's love can fail. God's love never fails, never, ever. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. On the cross, there was a divine exchange. Our sin put on his body, put on his spirit, our sickness, whatever it is, cancer, disease, all are the results of sin. All are like the one big lump of sin and then you no know, cancer and then it spread and, went and goes throughout the whole body. That's what happens to sin. We were born in that sin and it began to spread into every part of our whole being. 
separating us from God, causing sickness, causing shame, causing fear, so cancerous. That's what happened. But what did Jesus do? That cancer that was growing in our bodies was put onto the body of Jesus. Jesus took that cancer. Jesus took that sin, that rebellion, that stubbornness, that hurt, that pain. Upon himself. He was spitted upon, despised by the very ones he came to, to love and die for. And he gave us in exchange. He didn't curse us. He became cursed. He was cursed so that we can be blessed. And you heard during the uh, sharing time, communion and offering time, so that today we can be blessed when we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior and the Master. We can be blessed without pain, without toil. He's there to give us everything that he owns in heaven. He was God's son from heaven where there was no lack in heaven. There was no pain. There was at all. He didn't need to leave that throne. But he left. God sent him so that we too can share heaven. We too can share the presence of God. Mankind, everyone can also live the life that Jesus gave up on the, on the cross so that we can be made righteous, right standing. It's a gift. Today, it's about Christmas. It's a gift, right? We gave gifts to one another. The greatest gift is God's gift. And he sent it not by courier, <laughs> Okay. by his angels all the way from heaven to earth with love, a love that no human being can ever give us, even if they want to, they don't qualify. But Jesus got sent from heaven the most precious gift that you will ever, ever receive in your entire life because it is the gift of life. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will <coughs> never, never, how oh, wonderful the good news, never experience the wrath of God. God is holy, just, righteous. He has to punish sin as holy God. But because he punished your sin and my sin on Jesus Christ, we we'll never ever need to fear punishment ever again. None of us who have Jesus in our lives will ever need to fear hell, will ever need to fear disease or pain. He said, I come to give you life, Jesus said, and life abundantly. How did he give it to us? In exchange, he took our sin and he gave us his right standing with God so that that hammer will never hit on your head. That hammer of judgment will not, never, the Bible says, never experience the wrath of God. And even in these last days, Jesus is coming again for his church, for his people. Church is not a building. It's you and me, the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that the, 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 the drawdown of the curtain is the rapture for believers where we will be caught up. And then there will be a second coming. And this time, Jesus will not come. As a baby, he came for a purpose because he had to take your place as man, son of God and son of man, to die in our place. And after his resurrection, 
his coming as the king of kings and this second coming the whole world will see him coming in the clouds and we his saints behind him new earth new heavens how oh, so glorious that eternal life you never experience the wrath of god because of the love of god god is right right uh, just and holy but god is also love and the love of god is what brought jesus down for this is how god loved the world god didn't just say he loves you he showed it so how he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him would not perish but have eternal life god didn't send an angel to come and die for us god didn't just look around in heaven and say yeah one of you go la <laughs> no he said my son my one and only son will you go said to jesus in heaven they had a meeting and he said jesus son those of you who have sons will you go and die for that stubborn man and die for that selfish woman and die for everyone who spit on me or who never knew me Die for that one who's calling. I say, Lord, where are you, God? Who are who is God? And we've been asking that question for years. That one, Jesus, you go. You go and die for them, that they can live. Live and share heaven with us. Share the peace and the joy. Share eternal life. God sent. His son into the world, not to judge the world. The world is already judged. The day Adam sinned, the world came into judgment. All who have sinned have to go to hell because this is the righteous God. But God had a plan. What we call the plan of redemption, but even though Adam sinned, there's still hope for the lost mankind, for you and me, because of Jesus and God's love to save the world through Him, to save the world through Jesus Christ. That's the only way for this world to be saved, because a sinner cannot save another sinner. One who is lost cannot save another who is lost. One who is drowning cannot save another person who is drowning. The one who saved the drowning person must be above the waters and have the power to lift him up. This word save in the uh, Greek it means sozo. It means to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, from injury or peril, to save a suffering one from perishing, one suffering from disease. They're going to die from that disease. That's what, that's what saving means. Jesus came to save you from death, to make well, heal, restore, to help, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction. You know, our English has just only one word, save. But the Greek language and the Hebrew, which is the beautiful language that God spoke to the people, in one word, actually, sozo means all these things. To deliver and protect, to heal, preserve, and be made whole we don't understand what is someone saving you 
But let me show you this morning in the natural. Why do you need to be saved when you are in problem, right? When there's a typhoon, there's a flood, there's an earthquake. Your life is in danger when there's COVID <laughs> and you caught the virus. When there's a pandemic, there's an economic crisis, or there is a death, there's hopelessness, you lost your job, you lost hope, or you lost someone that you love. You are drowning. That is the time you need a savior. That is the time. That's why you have firemen who are supposed to save lives, right? Who are in a fire. You have those uh, people who go and save people in the floods. They can swim very well. If you cannot swim, don't send you to go and save someone drowning. Both will drown together. Yeah, you understand? If you locked in accidentally in the fridge, you need someone, you know, those big fridge freezers. You will die if no one opened the freezer door for you to come out. There's so many ways of being trapped in this earth. So many ways of being caught to almost death and where you need to call someone who is on the other side of where you are to open the door and pull you out of that mess. It could be our relationship life that we are in a mess, cannot come out of it. Whatever area, you know, we, we always say to someone, travel safe, be safe. And it's never before this word has been used even, you know, so, so often as during this time. Everyone said, when you go out of the house, be safe, be safe, be safe. Why? Because there's danger out there. There's danger out in this world. We understand what it means. Be safe, travel safe, have a safe flight, have a safe journey. Why? Because if you're not safe, you'll be destroyed. You will die. And that's what is only the physical life that we understand and we're trying to preserve. But God sent his son because there is much more than a physical life. There is an eternal life, a spirit. You, were, you and me were created a spirit being. And this spirit, the day we were conceived in our mother's womb, will never die, will live eternally. This body, because of sin, will return to ashes in 70 years, 80, 90 years. No one can beat, you know, and say, I, I don't want to die on this earth. No matter how much we use the word, be safe. <laughs> no matter how much we, we live inside, a, you know, clone ourselves from the world. Still, is appointed unto man once to die. And then the judgment. But thank God, because of Jesus, we have a way out. This is called the real sozo, the wholeness. Not only he saved our spirit, from eternal damnation because hell was not created for you and me. It was for the devil. But there's a whole long story. The devil wants man to go with him and accompany him. He's lonely. He's actually defeated. But God doesn't want any one of us to live eternity in hell. But eternity with him in heaven and still, and also on this earth, to pass our the rest of our life, whether it's ten years or twenty years, most probably shorter because Jesus is coming. With joy, a peace that you never felt before. Jesus said, "Do not be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled." Isn't that what is happening to people today? To you? 
in the last days, man's heart will fail them. The Bible says, because of fear. And isn't this fear crippling the world today? Fear of disease, fear of unknown, fear of what's going to happen in the next year. Is there going to be another virus or, you know, the, the world multiplying with virus, but we are multiplying in the kingdom of God with the blessings of God. Totally different because of what Jesus did on the cross, that exchange. And Jesus said before to his disciples, which is he's alive today, he's living and speaking to all of us this morning and saying, do not be afraid, Catherine, Tom. Do not be afraid, Rebecca. Why? Because I give you my peace. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. The girl, world's gift, peace, is temporary. If everything is fine, and nothing is going to be fine around this world, then you have peace. That is the temporary peace. The peace that is based on circumstances. But the peace that Jesus gives is not as the world gives. Whatever is happening around, Psalm 91 says that, one, one may fall, 1,000, 10,000 may fall at your right hand and on the left. But he shall not come near you, for he gives his angels charge over you to protect you. No one can touch you, not even the virus, because of the Jesus in us who came from heaven. When you receive him, you get new DNA. Because we're born from heaven in the spirit. We never, never, ever need to die or experience the wrath of God. You understand salvation today? Man so needs a savior. The world come Hollywood came out with Superman, Wonder Woman. I don't, what else? <laughs> okay. But they're all a fiction of the desire of man's heart for a savior of lost souls saying, if there is a God, can someone save me from this situation? I'm about to lose my life. I'm about to lose all the money. I'm about to lose my children, my parents and friends. And God says, I heard you. I heard your cry. And I'm here to save you. I send my son, the real savior. Not Superman, not Wonder Woman, Spider-Man. <laughs> okay, I think that's a new series, right? That is what the world wants, a savior. But our savior, Jesus, is already have been in this world since day one of creation. And the word became flesh. When Jesus was born, God's word of love, God's heart turned into flesh, Jesus came down to save a dying world, a hopeless world, a helpless world, and to give without anything in return. There's nothing he asks from us, from you, but just to give your heart and open the door and say, come in. As you open the door, this Christmas season, many open houses, <laughs> <laughs> to feed people, to love people. Yeah, but the real wonderful meaning of Christmas is Jesus is here. Will you open the door of your heart and let him be your savior and let him be your master. And let him change your life forever with all that he has, that he carry in his hands, the blessings of heaven, the peace, the joy that this world cannot give. Only he can to be made whole. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For God says, at just the right time. Is there a right time on this earth? Sometimes we say, we don't know when is the right time. Don't even know when is the right time to go or not go. That means to die or not die, right? 
that God knows the right time. And the right time is the time where you hear the good news of Jesus Christ. At just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Because we don't know whether they're without Christ, whether there's a tomorrow. Anything can happen. The Berlin Wall came down overnight. Everything in this world is temporary. You hold on to things of this world, one day they fade away. And you wake up, it's gone. The only permanent, eternal thing is Jesus Christ. It's now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you never need to walk back into your past and feel the pain and the hurt of the cruelty of sin. Today is the day you can walk out of the cage and be a free man and woman or child loved by father. If you've never known love, today you will know love as you have never ever known before. Jesus Christ is not a religion. It's not a set of rules or guidelines for you to follow. It's a person. It's the son. He is the son of the living God. The son of God who spoke to you, who, who heard you cry. You may have cried when you were 10 years old, when you were 20. When you went through a hard time, he heard you. And that's why you are here this morning, to hear him. He responded to your cry. God loves you and he heard that cry. Even you may have just said it once in your life. God, you are real. Show me. That's what he did. He showed you at Calvary. He showed you at Christmas Day where Jesus was born. Don't worry about the technicality of the exact day. But the, the main thing is that he came. He came. Because he came. Because he came because of Jesus. Today we have salvation. We can be restored. Any part of your body that's been tormented by the devil, any part of your body that has become cancerous, whether it's the real cancer or just the evil behind today, actually 2,000 years ago on the cross, Jesus Christ already finished it. It is finished, he said. When on that cross, that punishment was meted out to him that was supposed to be ours. And he said, when he declared it is finished, it means what? Salvation to everyone is now possible. Healing, love, peace, joy, righteousness, right standing, the gift is now possible for anyone who would just open the hands and say, I receive it. I receive you. The gift that no one could ever give. Except Jesus Christ. And it says today, when I saw this picture, number 12, <laughs> it was a calendar. I had it for quite some time in my phone already. But in the last few days, I had a dream or vision last week and God spoke to me the number 12 it's not superstitious or anything the Bible when you come to know the word of God everything there has meaning including numbers colors see how God is so creative and he spoke to me and said 12 and this when I saw this picture which is before the vision I didn't see it as 12 yeah today is 25th doesn't matter 
But when I saw this, it was 12. God saying that 12 months in a year, although time with God is different from man, but every month, there will be fruits. There will be joy. Every day of the 12 months of a year in your life will never be the same as before. When Jesus comes into your life and gives you his life, Every day is accounted for. Every day you will have this peace. It's forever. You will never take away. No man can take it away. No human being can take away that blessing from you. Can take away the love. Take away the peace, the joy, and the blessings. Supernatural. Every area of your life. The wealth, the peace, the health, the wellness. It's for. 12 months of the year, 12, 12 plus 2, 24 hours. In heaven, there'll be 12 times 2, 24 elders. Well, if I describe to you heaven, we all want to go there now. <laughs> okay, but the moment you ask Jesus into your life, you have heaven in your heart. Now, we don't have to wait until then. The place of rest that's why we say rest in peace, right? When someone dies. Today, we don't need to physically die to have that rest. All we need is have Jesus in our heart. Ask him to come into my life. I'm tired and sick of being worried. Tired and sick of all the troubles and all the sicknesses in my body, in my brain, in my head. And who do you need? A savior. And is he here? Yes, he is. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Today is the day of salvation for everyone who will believe. Praise the Lord. Everyone needs a savior. Everyone. And the savior has been born. And the savior is here this morning telling you that he loves you. He will never leave you. Never. And your life will never be the same. Ever. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father, oh Heavenly Father, Daddy God, Abba Father, in whatever language we call you, you have become our Father. And Lord, that's because 2,000 years ago, Father, you sent your Son to come to this earth as full of sin and sickness and disgusting, but you sent him and Jesus, you came. You saw us in our worst state. We were lost, we were ungodly, we didn't know you, we didn't love you, we didn't care. But you cared, Lord. Father, you cared. You cared for every single soul on this earth. And you came, Lord, to die for us on the cross so that we can have eternal life, the life that was meant for your creation, for mankind. And Lord, Today, we are grateful to you. We give you thanks, Lord, that we are saved. In the midst of the world that is so full of problems and disaster, you give us Jesus. You gave us peace. You gave us life. And today, we celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Shekelamaka shukuri andarabakashanda. For those of you who 
have not known Jesus and you have heard him maybe today for the first time, a second time, a third time, or many times in your life, you have heard of Jesus, but you have never personally asked him to come into your heart. You've never personally opened that door of your heart and said, Lord, God, you sent your son to die for me and I open my heart and I want you to come into my heart, into my life, be my savior so that I never need to be ever lost again in this world. I never need to be an orphan anymore. I can have a father who loves me. I can receive eternal life, peace, joy that this world cannot give and receive and enjoy the life of pleasure, not pressure, because we are in him. He holds you tightly and loves you dearly to the point of death. And if you are that person this morning and you heard the love of Jesus and you heard your father speaking to you and you heard your savior knocking at the door of your heart and you say, God, I don't want to shut that door anymore. And this morning, I want to open the door of my heart to receive the love of God in the form, the greatest gift in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. And if that's you, will you put up your hand or indicate that to this morning, you want, you don't want to leave this Zoom <laughs> lost and helpless and hopeless the way you came in, but you want to go out into the world to look at your child, your family in the world and say, I am saved. Like Kate said, I am saved. The daughter of Evelyn, I'm saved from a little child. The day we told we, we said to him, you want to get water baptized? You know, a 10 year old girl. And all she said was, yes, I'm saved. She knew what is to be saved. A child had an experience with Jesus Christ and know what is salvation, what is being born again, what is being free, what is being lost and being found. A 10 year old child. So beautiful. God can save everyone. Whatever age you are, you may be 5, 10, 20, 30s, or even in your 60s or 70s. And you, when you say, Lord, save me, he says, yes, yes. It's never too late to have Jesus come into your life and change it for good for you to be blessed forever. There's anyone here this morning that call Jesus is calling you. Will you respond to his love? And said, Jesus, I want you. If you do, if you want, let it be now. Because today is the day of salvation. Don't wait anymore. Today, give your heart to Jesus and he will give you. He has already given you his heart and his life on that cross. If there's anyone, I would like to pray for you and lead you into this new life, eternal life of receiving Jesus into your heart forever. Don't be shy. It's between you and God. It's a day, a glorious day to be born again. 
same day as Jesus. Huh? <laughs> what a, it only comes once in a year, this one. And you are here. You are here this morning. Did anyone learn that Jesus come into your life yet? And you would like to do this this morning? The best decision that you ever made in your whole life? You know, we made a lot of wrong decisions. I lived many years already, okay? <laughs> made a lot of wrong decisions. But there's one decision that I made when I was 12 years old. I never regretted. It was the decision to say, Jesus, come into my life. You saw me through six decades of life. We will see you, be with you, lead you, bless you. First of all, first thing, save you from sin. Forgive you of all your sins. He's already done that. And give you his life. I will wait a little longer because Jesus waited for you. Jesus waited for you. 20 years, 30 years, he's still waiting for you to open that door for him to come in and save you and bring you into his glorious heaven, which you can experience on this earth. Thank you, Lord. Every single soul, if you were the only one left on this planet earth, Jesus would still come and die for you. That's how precious you are to him. If you are shy, some of you have done that, but don't hesitate. Some of you have not, but we will, I will lead everyone in this prayer, okay? together and if you in your heart wants Jesus to come into your life wherever you are you can pray on your own quietly and ask Jesus to come into your heart and be born again with the Savior always by your side to save you from sin, to save you from hell, save you from sickness and pain. I'll just we pray this together. And if you had never known Jesus, never opened that door of your heart, you can just follow along. All right, wherever you are. And the moment you say that, Jesus comes into your heart. And you are born again, having a new spirit. Amen. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone can also say this, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus, to die for me on the cross. Thank you for forgiving, taking all my sins and forgiving all my sins. I'm a sinner, Lord, I was. And I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. And I want to ask you 
Lord Jesus, to come into my heart this morning and be my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I'm now a new creation in Christ. I'm now a child of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have said that prayer this morning, together with me, the Bible says that you are saved. You have been born again, and you are a child of God. Amen. Let uh, the one who invited you, okay, this morning, tell him or tell her of what is in your heart. Okay? And they can lead you personally. But if you have already said that prayer with your heart, you're already safe and born again. Okay? But just share it with the one who invited you so that we can help you to grow in the love of the Father into this new life where fear cannot touch you, sickness cannot touch you because you're all protected by the blood of Jesus and you have a new purpose and destiny in your life with our Father God forever. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to pray for anyone this morning. If you have a pain in your body or a sickness, remember, that was a result of sin. Jesus already taken it. That cancer that developed into more, more cancers is already taken away. It's put upon Jesus. And if you want prayer for any part of your life, just put up your hand. <laughs> no in Zoom. And I'll pray for you. We are here to pray for you.